What's up guys? Spencer here. Although if you're following me, you probably already know that. I am um, Saturday night, about a week and a half before Christmas time, and I am just gonna get out of the house for a little bit and take a little drive. Go get something to eat. Just dropped off, uh, when I drop off, I went and was dog sitting for the weekend. You're gonna hear a little bit of bumps and a little bit of engine revving too, but that's just how my piece of shit car with 152,000 miles on it is. It's been a good car. It's gotten me from point A to point B, a lot of gigs, a lot of traveling from the mid-Atlantic, both Northern Virginia and Maryland, down to North Carolina. And but that's that's not what I want to talk about today. What I want to talk about is just 2024 and going forward, just as who I am and what I want to accomplish in this life. There. Basically, for those of you who haven't been around since day one of Embrace the Sub 21, we pretty much put that channel together, not only for me and Daniel to quote unquote document fitness, but also to get my original music out there. And it still is that to this day. I mean, if you look in the, if you're not lazy and you look in the description every now and again, you'll see links to my original stuff and you'll see that the instrumentals are my own original tunes and because of you know my my split which this is part of that it wasn't a hundred percent her fault I mean the part of it part of the reasons why I split was not only the unspeakable act that I won't talk about on here but it was also how I just have more living to do. Like I have more things I want to accomplish before I kick the bucket or, you know, get married again or decide to have a family if that's what I do intend to do. And that was part of, you know, the TikTok shorts compilation I put out this year. It wasn't just, you know, music stuff. It was also vlogging stuff, taste tests. And I feel like music and food and you know, vlogging, learning about new places, that's really what brings people together and what you can learn about uh, certain cultures through. And not only that, but also just you know, talking with people. And that's really what I'm, I'm aiming to do. Like, yes, we've learned a lot about both British and Irish culture through Embrace the Sub 21, but at the same time, you can only do so much through your reaction videos. Like, you can only gather so much. Now, a lot of it, a lot of educational stuff is low hanging fruits in terms of, you know, quality of content. And also, I don't want to have to put text over screen for a lot of these TV shows, but we're dealing in the realm of copyright. And if y'all, haven't been paying attention it's just a billboard for our patreon which you know that's that's been a lot of help and I appreciate a lot of y'all that have already come over to that one and you know supported us that way but what I'm really thinking about is and this is what I'm what I want to do in 2024 and beyond or at least you know figure out if it's what I want to do for the rest of my life is travel like those of you who don't know me, I'm from a small town in, like, that's on the North Carolina Virginia border, right across, right on the North Carolina side, I'm 20 minutes away from the Martinsville Speedway NASCAR track. And, you know, I haven't had a lot of life experiences, and I had a bit of a rough upbringing with my dad not being there a lot of times, but he did travel a lot, so that's part of my inspiration for want to go travel more and you know I I always wanted to go travel with him but thank god I did it because you know I won't talk about that but I have gotten way off topic here where was I oh man oh yeah 
Um, I, I figure the best way to travel through somewhere is to go busking and to try the local cuisines, talk with people that are local to there. And the starting place in 2024 would be both Canada and the United Kingdom and Ireland, because that's what Daniel and I have been looking at for the past three years. And it's pretty much, you know, regular, regular reactions. Staying in YouTube's algorithm has been how we've been building up to that. Like, we can't do reactions forever. That's just, we would, I would lose my mind. Daniel definitely would lose his mind. Like, that's something that we're really not telling y'all go behind the scenes is that we're pretty much just fed up and burnt out with doing reaction content because one, it's kind of disrespectful to the original copyright holders. You know, someone that puts out original music and knows about, you know, content ID and stealing stuff, that, I understand it from the side of the copyright holder is, you know, that's, that's their content and how are the people that own the copyright and the actors and the crew members, how are they gonna make residuals off of it if dumbasses like us are keep stealing it and you know mashing it so much that we can't that we it's basically something completely different and falls under fair use. So I get it from their side. And also, yes, we've been uploading daily and our sign off is unplug and go do something epic. And I I recognize that we're part of that problem. And, but at the same time, we like to be able to get to a place with our other, our other channels, you know, my music, my uh, motorsport, and my food channel, and Daniel with his uh, podcast and his stories. You know, that's really what we want to do. We don't, if it, we've even said in private, if Embrace the Sec 21 died tomorrow, if it got all the copyright strikes that we are we are pretty much ripe to have happen to us. If we got that, and it burned down tomorrow, we'd be okay. I mean, we'd have to go get regular jobs to pay our bills, but at the same time, our friendship will be all right. We'll still be friends, we'll still be brothers. That's not gonna change. But at the same time, I just want y'all to know that behind the scenes, if it wasn't for the fact that we make we make money doing this, we don't make a lot of it. It's barely enough to pay our bills, but we do make money from it. If it wasn't for that, we would not be doing this. And with me personally, with the fact that I'm now single, and like if it wasn't for the U.S. economy and the economies just around the world not being that good right now. I wouldn't be living in my Nana's house. I love her to death. And, you know, we've grown really close this this year between, you know, my divorce, her knee replacement surgery, and a few other, you know, things. We've grown really close. And, you know, she's up in age. Like, she's a lot more active than most 80-year-olds. But at the same time, I do worry about her. I do worry that, you know, what could happen? What what if I'm, what if I'm not there to help her? So that, and coupled with rent prices being through the roof, even from a more conservative state like North Carolina, that's why I haven't left yet. But still, have a lot of plans with what I want to do, and I feel like now's the prime opportunity to do a lot of those things that I've been wanting to do. And I hope that y'all will come along on a journey with me. That's. I couldn't do this without a lot of y'all that have already come over here. Those who understand what it is that we're trying to accomplish. You know, both of us, me and Daniel. I mean, you're probably watching this on one of my channels, so I appreciate that. And yeah, another thing I've been thinking about, and that wasn't the end of the video, obviously, is how a lot of these social media algorithms, they don't, like I was watching a video from uh, Matt Pat Film Theory about how YouTube broke you and how a lot of just regular streaming content doesn't a 
allow for big major events to happen as a collective like certain references in movies and TV shows and music like fall flat on most of the people unless they have seen it because we're so segmented as a society and we don't have a lot of things that bring us together except for tragedy and I I'm just convinced that there is more in the world than just tragedy. That it's not all doom and gloom. And that the thing that unites us now being tragedy has made us more cynical, more just bitter and not willing to leave our houses. I mean, there's more to it than, you know, willingness to leave a house. There's also good reason. I mean, my brother is certainly a an example of that and my mom is starting to become that but that's more than you need to know and and that's another thing that's fueling my desire to travel out to other places in the world not just you know ones that speak the same language that I do but I just feel like there's more that unites us than divides us we all have the same needs the same wants the same desires it's like I'm, I've now become enamored with Anthony Bourdain, and one quote from him that struck me was when he approaches someone in a new country or whatever, it's the same, the first things out of his mouth are, what's for dinner, what makes you happy? And that struck, struck me right there. I was like, that's all that, that's all you really need to build a connection with somebody, what's for dinner, and what makes you happy because you know those are what's for dinner is part of what makes a culture and you know what makes you happy that that's stuff that unites all of us and that's part of my motivation to travel and you know get out of the small town that I live in which I'm not you know crapping on that in fact through the whole ETS 21 journey not only has it educated me and Daniel about things outside of the United States, but it's kind of more solidified who we are as people. Like, like me personally, I will never take for granted, you know, a good plate of barbecue from a hole-in-the-wall restaurant or a good glass of sweet tea, uh, some some local distilled moonshine, a big old plate of homemade biscuits and gravy or you know college football a NASCAR race a dirt track race like those are things like you know country music bluegrass music those are things that are comforts to me and you know through moving other places like at first I felt ashamed for liking all that stuff like I felt like I had to apologize for being a, you know, someone from the South that talks like a roadie from a Luke Combs concert. But no, this is who I am. This is how I was raised. I mean, granted, I'm thankful that I was able to get out of my town and see it from other perspectives, especially like where I went to high school in Northern Virginia outside of Washington, D.C. Well, was a bit more affluent, it was richer, but there was more uh, cultures uh, represent, represent, it's not the right word, but cultures there, like from more affluent uh, countries, like, and also when I lived in Maryland, there was more diversity there. Not to say that there's not diversity in North Carolina, like definitely Charlotte and Raleigh have become more of melting pots, but I'm just saying that was my first exposure to that, and I'm glad that I got it, and it made me a lot more open to other people's ways of thinking, and I'm, I'm grateful for that. Still, there's a lot more on this planet to cover, and I've got songs to sing, foods to eat, drinks to drink, late nights to be had, people to meet, and I just hope that you'll come along for the ride on that. That's, I don't know where I'm going to end this one, but thanks for 
letting me talk for a little bit, letting me just get some things off my chest and kind of solidify what it is I want to do with my life starting next year. Take care, y'all. Catch you on the flip side.